Hey everyone, my name is Aiden and I am not a bird dressed in a man costume held up by tape. Kaka! Anyway, you might have seen Aiden's, I mean, my my last video documentary on the LGBTQ community and repeal of Section 377A, an anti-homosexuality law in Singapore. In our quest to repeal 377A last year, we also ended up defining marriage in our constitution as between one man and one woman. And I found it weird that marriage even needs to be defined constitutionally, which made me ask the question, why is marriage? Wait, that's not the right question. Is marriage constitutional? Yes, of course it is. Don't be stupid, but not for the reason you think. And before we start, I just need to read this. Uh, a lot of information in this video has been researched is not legal advice. Aiden is not a lawyer. He is just a fat, no know-it-all idiot making videos that are too long. Why did I write this? <clears throat> you know what? Never mind. Let's just get on with it. Uh, right now, under the Constitution of Singapore, marriage is constitutional only because of this line, Article 12, Section 2 of the Constitution. There shall be no discrimination against citizens of Singapore on the ground only of religion, race, descent, or place of birth. But, but man, you ask, that doesn't say anything about marriage, to which I'll reply, first of all, I'm not a bird man, I'm a fat man, caca, and you're right. It doesn't actually say anything about marriage. The institution of marriage is instead largely constitutionalized under Article 156. But to understand why Article 12 is important to Article 156, you need to ask, what is marriage? Think about it. I know I say this a lot, but really think about it. What is marriage? Is it as our constitution currently defined as between one man, one woman? If so, isn't that a kind of discrimination? Because that means there's a portion of laws that only applies to people who can get married. It isn't like disability aids where you can't choose to be disabled. Marriage incentives are weird because you can just choose to get it if the person you love fits the law's definition. And let's not get into the fact that bird humans aren't allowed to marry either, Kaka. If you're single, you're barred from all sorts of benefits that married couples have. You can't choose to not be single. It's a partnership, not a kidnapping. I can't control if someone likes me. But if you're a gay couple, you can't have all those benefits either. Because what, your love is wrong? And if you're a giant bird human cacao, well, we don't need to talk about that. So why all these different levels? I'm sure there's a phrase for it, like a class organization or a class order, a bias system, you know? Well, you might say the reason for this is because marriage is to encourage people to have children. If that's the case, why can't single women in Singapore be allowed to use in vitro fertilization to have a baby? Or if you think you need two parents to properly raise a child, why can't gay parents adopt? Or if you think you need one man, one woman to raise a child, which you don't, why must they be married? Can't they just be a couple? Maybe those aren't your issues. Maybe it's a religious thing. And if that's the case, isn't it against our constitution for you to force your religious belief into law to affect people without your belief? If my god, Jeremy the Rainbow, but blessed they be Kaka, says that marriage is only between people who can fly, can I force that belief on your weak non-flying ass? It just seems then like marriage as a legal or constitutional concept is an excuse to promote a tradition. A tradition that, let's be frank, is kind of outdated. Any reason to restrict marriage is then by its very nature discrimination. You are providing some people benefits that are either impossible or perjurious for others to achieve. And that's a problem because Article 12 of the Constitution guarantees equality. Uh, unless... It doesn't? Article 12, Section 1 of our Constitution is basically Singapore's equal rights. We are all equally protected under the law, and that should pretty much be it. You might be even asking yourself, why is there even a Section 1? Shouldn't 1 be all that's needed? Which brings us to Section 2. The thing about laws is that they are very finicky about language. And I, as a fucking writer who is not a bird and also very finicky about language, caca. Section 2 of Article 12 is kind of insane. Like right here, except as expressly authorized by this constitution, there shall be no discrimination against citizens of Singapore on the ground only of religion, race, descent, or place of birth. This is kind of a masterstroke of discrimination. 
Like a lot of things in this country, it gives the outlook of perfection, the shell of equality. But there are two major issues here. First, the word only prevents discrimination on the ground of religion, race, descent, or place of birth. But if you combine it with something else like age or looks, or maybe you're in a hypothetically sexist religion that forces women to do things unequally and advocate assaulting them if they don't, you can discriminate based on religion and gender. Technically. It hasn't happened yet, that we know of, and I hope it never does, that we know of. And we should really fix this before it comes to pass, that we know of. There's been a call to add gender to the grounds of equal protection, but we've been slow to move because doing that means religion and businesses can no longer discriminate based on gender, and that's... B bad? <laughs> The second issue is the phrase, except as expressly authorized. That's right. If the constitution were to be amended to do so, you can technically discriminate against anyone. Which is what happened when we amended Article 156 with Section 3. The law now defines marriage as a union between a man and a woman. So now we finally come back to the question we started with. Why is marriage? Yes, I knew that's a question. You might be thinking, fat man, why are you so focused on Article 12? Because the main reason we chose to repeal Section 377A was not because it's a bad law and homophobic. It's not because it's discriminatory or unenforceable. It's not even because it doesn't apply to birds. It was because of Article 12. They knew 377A was discrimination because of Article 12. They knew that hetero marriage was discrimination because of Article 12. And they were able to continue discriminating because of Article 12. After repealing 377A, Singapore amended Article 156 Section 3 into the Constitution, defining marriage as between a man and a woman, knowingly continuing an act of discrimination as defined by Article 12 Section 1. Because Article 12 Section 2 allowed it. If Article 12 Section 1 is a test, Section 2 is like a cheat sheet. You can ask the question, is it discrimination? And Section 1 will say, yes. And then you can ask, can I continue to do it? Section 2 will then go, M maybe we'll see. So here's the conclusion. Article 12 Section 2 shouldn't exist. It's just a loophole to discriminate. And it's kind of a weird thing to have in a country based on justice and equality, something that's in our pledge. And everything that Article 12 Section 2 set out to protect is pretty much covered in the rest of the constitution. Also, it only applies to Singaporeans, so you can technically be racist to people from other countries, which we def definitely uh, aren't. Why do we even get married for? Marriage is fake, it's just a concept we made up. Originally, it was to make official the bonds of two people who f sucks. But eventually, we decided that marriage was more than that. We changed it. It now defines the bond between a man and a woman in love, so much so that they want the world to make it official. And we can change it again. Why just a man and a woman? Why not two men? Why not two women? What about five birds in a human skin suit who love each other equally, Kakao? And why must there be extra benefits to love? Why must love be bound by numbers? What, single people aren't deserving of benefits? Why is it more expensive for me to buy a house than a married couple even though I have less money? And we are somehow less worthy because we're single? Thor never got married in the MCU and yet was worthy enough to live Mjolnir. No, not that Thor. Not that one either. That's the one. Best Thor. None of this is to say you shouldn't get married if you want to and can. Just that when you do, you should be mindful to know that you are experiencing a joy that an entire portion of your fellow humans aren't allowed to feel because of the law. Even though it's the whole reason Article 12 existed in the first place to guarantee equal protection under the law. That's right, Article 12 isn't about equal rights. It's about equal protection. Because we are all birds, Kakao. We were born free to do anything we want with all rights guaranteed. The law's job is just to make sure we don't abuse those rights. But Article 12 as it stands is a failure. Section 2 allows for such abuses and more to take place under the guidance of the government no less, should they allow it. 
And even if you don't care about marriage equality, it still leaves the door open for other forms of discrimination. Just because they haven't yet happened in public light doesn't mean they won't in the future. And we should stop it before it happens. So now that repeal 377A is done, we need to kind of fight this next level. Because discrimination is a marathon, not a race. Not everyone can fly. <laughs> you weak ass little bitches. And while I'm not a lawyer and everything I've said could be wrong and it's just my personal opinion for legal reasons, if we have the time and people smile at me, think it's a good idea, we could maybe amend 12 too. I'm, I'm recording this because I know some of you sick freaks want to see it. So. Yeah. Uh, that's hair. That's hair. Uh, you sick bastards.